What I have here is five different bowls of fruit. And we're going to learn about the array methods for each map and reduce. Let's say that we want to count the clementines 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So how can we do that? Well, we can use the for each method in JavaScript. What I have here is all the bowls represented in code. And I have an array here uh, called bowls. And as you can see, I have an object for each element. So this is the clementine. It's one and apple one, no banana in the first bowl and the second bowl and all the five bowls here. So that's the array that we're going to work with. And we're going to start with the for each loop. And we're going to count all the clementines. So we have our bowls dot for each. And what is the difference with for each and, for example, the map? Well, for each won't return a new array for us. So it will iterate over the array. And if we want to change something, it's going to change that array. And that's uh, not good in most cases because you want to return a new array. And in this case, we're only going to count the clementines, so it doesn't matter. And of course, we could count the clementines as we know that there's clementines in each of these elements. We could just grab the length of the array but we don't know if it's always going to be like that. So we're going to count clementines with the for each loop. And for this one, I created a let up here, clementines. It starts at zero. So that's the variable that we're going to add to. So inside our for each loop, we have the bowl. We have an inline arrow function, curly brackets. And then I check if the bowl, this is going to be the element. It's going to start on the first element here, and then it's going to iterate through them all. So we want to grab this one. We want to check if we have a clementine. So if bowl, I check for the property. That's this one. And this is pretty cool, actually, that you can use these uh, little emojis uh, and have them as a property for your object. On each iteration, I check for the clementine on each object. And if this one equals to 1, I'm going to add 1 to the clementines let that we have on top of this document. So clementines plus equal one. So this is how you can use the for each loop to count stuff uh, that you have in your array. And we can console log it out also. Console log number of clementines. And I have the clementines variable that I created up here. All right, let's try this out. I'm going to go to my browser and in the console here, number of clementines five. That's correct because we know that we have a clementine in each bowl. So that is working. So that's a very simple example on what you can do with for each. Essentially, you can loop through all of the elements and you can do stuff with it. If you want to change something, you have to change this array in place. And that's usually not good, at least in functional programming, because you probably want to return a new array instead. And that's what we're going to talk about next with the map method. Let's say that we want to remove all the apples from these bowls. So I grab one apple and remove it. And now we have an apple here, so I remove that also. So we have removed all the apples from the bowls. All right, we know how we can iterate through this array with for each. And in this case, we're counting the clementines. But what if we want to remove something? Now we want to remove all the apples from the bowls. So if you can see here in this array, you can see that we have one apple in the first element and we have one apple in the fourth. So we're going to remove those. We don't want any apples in the bowls but we don't want to remove any bowl. We're going to have five of them as we had from the beginning. And that's the big difference with map versus reduce, for example. With map, it will return a new array that has the same length. We need to return something for each element that we map through. So map will return a new array where you can transform the element to whatever you want, but it will have the same length. If you want to change the length, we should use reduce. And that's what we're going to do in the next part. But for now, we're going to map through these bowls. So const all bowls without apples equal bowls.map. And we have the bowl. And also, if you want to iterate a number, you can grab it with an i. And you can do that with for each also. In our case, we don't need that number now. So we're just going to have the bowl. We have an inline arrow function, and for each bowl that we iterate through, I'm going to change the apple to zero. We're going to set the apples to zero. So we have the bowl. I'm just going to grab it up here. So I check for the property of the apple. I set that one to zero, and then I'm going to return the bowl. And I'm going to console log it out. Console log all bowls without apples. 
And then we have the const all balls without apples. I go back to my console, and you can see here that we have all the balls, but we have removed the apples. So that's exactly what we wanted. But we have the same length as the first array. That means that we have all the five balls, and we haven't removed any ball. So that's what we're going to do next with the reduce method. And for last, let's say that we want to remove all the balls that don't have a banana in it. So we remove it. Something like this, so we only have the balls left that have a banana in them. And how do we do this in JavaScript? Well, we have something that's called reduce. All right, one more method to go, and that's the reduce method. And in this case, we want to remove all the balls that don't have a banana on it. So that's what we're going to use reduce for. So I create a new const, balls without bananas equal. We have the balls, and we're going to reduce. And the reduce method is going to give us something that's called an accumulator. And that's kind of the end product of this reduce method. That's what it's going to end up to. So it's going to accumulate everything from each iteration. And in the end, that's going to be what this method returns. So we have the accumulator, and we have a bowl. And just as before, you can have the iterator number if you want that also, but we don't need that. So I have an inline arrow function. And we want to remove all the balls that doesn't have a banana. So we check if, and we have the bowl. That's the element here. On each element, we're going to check if we have a banana. I'm going to grab it up here. If that one equal to one, in this case, it can only be one because I know that I just put one banana on each bowl. But if you can have five bananas, you have to do another if statement here. But for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep it like this. So I check if this banana property equals to one. And if it equals to one, I'm going to return a new array where I spread in the accumulator. That is going to be the accumulated array that we have from each iteration. So if we, for example, had an array with two elements from the previous iteration, we're going to add these two elements in here. And then we're going to add the bowl because this one has a banana. So we add that one in. Otherwise, we return the accumulator only. And that means that we don't put this bowl into the accumulator. We're only returning the accumulator from the previous step in the iteration. So if we don't have a banana, we're going to leave it out. We only return these bowls that have a banana. And then I'm going to console log this one out. Console.log, bowls with bananas. And bowls, <laughs> yeah, I called it without bananas. It should say with bananas, of course. Bowls with bananas. And I go back to the browser, check my console. I have some typo. All right, let's check it out. Yeah, and that's because I forgot to actually initialize this with an array. Because in the reduce method, last, you can specify what this accumulator is going to be. And in our case, we want to return a new array. So I have to specify this as an array also. And then I go back to my console. And you can see here, bowls with bananas. So these are all the bowls that has a banana in it. So that's how the reduce method works. You can change the length of the array that you return. In this case, it's only three elements, and before it was five. So we can reduce it to whatever we want. All right, I hope you learned something in this video about these three methods that are very useful in the day-to-day -day coding, so to say. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel and spread the word, and I see you in another one.